Hello troublemakers out there, I'm Matt Catling and this is the next Disruption Session where we interview the biggest troublemakers we can find, we answer your questions to help you get disruptive in life and business. Now let's get started. Hey, it's Matt here. Welcome to the next Disruption Session. Today's session, we're talking about an interesting concept, which is the dangers of living it later. And I really want to kind of unpack that for you because sometimes there can be a bit of a misinterpretation around this concept. We had uh, Create Your Future Now on the weekend, and it was so wonderful to connect with everybody. And, and really, that course is about helping people get on a true target. And it kind of inspired this podcast because I run a lot of events and we help people kind of open up to the concept of a false target versus a true target and really the dangers of a false target because a false target is, it never ends and and that's such a challenge. The false target is that wound, that merry-go-round that you just keep repeating over and over and over again. And even though I help people get awareness of this stuff, a lot of the time they go back into their environments and they continue living these patterns, making life decisions from their wounds and repeating things like anger, sadness, hurt, fear, guilt, and and really having them build up to a point where it becomes significantly challenging. And so this is kind of this concept of, of the dangers of this living later mentality. Now, I'm all about patience. I think patience is one of the most important things, diligence and patience. However, what I want to say to you about this concept of living it later is the patience of waiting, the patience of waiting before you start. And that's where I think patience can be really, really dangerous. A lot of you know that you need to shift. You know that things need to change around your health, your relationships, your business, your career, the money area of your life. And a lot of people that I talk to, they say to me, well, it's not that bad yet. Now, the word yet suggests that you know you're on track to maybe a crisis, a challenge. And and the thing is, most people only wake up when they get that challenge. They they move from being in that self-induced hypnotic trance to waking up and going, oh my God, it's so bad, I need to change it now. And so this concept of a kind of patience versus impatience, I think is, is really, really interesting. When I, I launched my Live It Now training, a lot of people were like, oh, Matt, you can't have everything that you want now. Now, sure, you're not going to become a billionaire overnight. You're not going to have like Brad Pitt abs, um, you know, if you're overweight in the next day. What I'm talking about is actually starting now. And what I mean by that is getting yourself to a point where you're not putting it off. You're not going, okay, well, one day, then I'm going to get my finances sorted. Or, you know, one day when, you know, I'm, you know, 50 or whatever it is, then I'm going to look at that stuff. And, you know, I'm too young to look at that stuff right now. Or, you know, one day I'm going to, you know, get my health sorted, you know, the next, you know, New Year's resolutions or, or whatever it is. Or one day we're going to fix a relationship. Or one day I'm going to travel to the places that I want. That is so dangerous because you've probably heard this before. The road to someday leads to no day. And so when I say live it now, what I mean is make a decision. Make a decision right now. Now, you don't have to obviously, you know, do major, major, major things straight away. But what we're talking about is making a decision. For instance, if... You know you're on track to living a life of scarcity or you're, you're living below the line. Now is to, the time to make some new decisions. Now is the time to go, all right, well, I know I'm on track to something that's really, really challenging. And I know I've probably been suppressing this or avoiding this. I actually need to do something now. And they can be micro things like, all right, what I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to get a coach. I'm going to get a coach. I'm going to start working on it right now. 
I'm going to start to look at the mindset stuff that's in the way, the belief systems, the, the wounds that are holding me back. I'm going to start to put a structure in place. Remember, structures create outcomes. Or it could be little things. If, if it's a health thing, it could be, you know what, I'm starting right now. Right now is when I'm doing it. I'm living it now. I'm going to go and I'm going to book a PT session or I'm going to go to that gym. And I'm not suggesting that you go and you know, train to the point of complete exhaustion. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, is that you start now, okay? You start now, but then you make the committed decision to stay into this game for the long term. And that's what I call daily decisions. It's the daily decisions that you make right now that compound over a long term. And instead of, instead, of, instead of kind of setting your up yourself up for failure, which is like these outrageous goals and I have to be here right now. No, 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 no. Let's look at at a daily level. What are the what are the core habits that if you just did this every single day, it would compound over a twelve month period. It would compound over you know a twelve a twelve month, two year, three year, six year, seven year, whatever it is. And a lot of the time, when you look at it. And you break it down into those daily decisions and you use the mindset techniques to work on those habits, suddenly it becomes really, really easy. Like a lot of people, they're like, oh, Matt, you know, I want to uncover my mission. I need to become best version of myself. And the reality is you can do that right now. You can look at what is best version and what are the habits that I would have and then start to look at your daily schedule and go, well, okay, well, best version of me is health. Well, okay, I'm going to set up a ritual, a morning ritual. I'm going to set up some habits around movement. I'm going to set up some habits around nutrition. I'm going to set some habits around mindset that are actually going to help me increase my energy and I'm going to feel like I'm moving. Or it could be around the finances. Well, I'm going to do some daily decisions around my finances and maybe in the past you've been avoiding it. Maybe you're going to be looking at it and then working with a plan um, and doing the micro things every day. And as I said to you, this stuff compounds over the long term. See, what a lot of people do is they kind of do the patient thing. And I learned this from Ty Lopez, which is, they they patient they're patient around their start point they avoid their start point but then when they start something they then get really really impatient so they start their health training or they start their health program and they're like well why am i not an athlete after training for a few days or they they start a financial plan and they're like well how come i'm not a multimillionaire or they they haven't achieved certain levels like they've you know, you've, they've set goals to be a billionaire and they've never made, you know, $5,000 in their business. There are levels that need to happen and the daily decisions are the things that are the key. And so I thought I'd share this because I've, you know, I've had um, a couple of appointments and there's this, um, you know, one situation and this guy's got like an incredible amount of potential, incredible amount of potential. And I'm like, Wow, if we just got you started instead of your normal pattern of delaying, the little things will compound over the long term. And the reality is then you get into the mindset work, which is what obviously what I'm a special my specialty is, and then all of this stuff becomes fun. That's the key. You want to have towards motivation is where you love these habits, you love these things, you love these rituals. And that happens when we take the pressure off, we get rid of the wounds underneath, and then we start to associate consistently pleasure um, to doing those certain things. I mean, if you think about that, there's only a couple of habits in each area of life, if you want to uncover what they are, and you consistently do them, like, you're guaranteed to have health, you're guaranteed to have wealth, you're guaranteed that your business is going to completely transform, and your personal development. You know, you know, things like morning rituals and building your energy, things like learning and growing, um, things like working with a coach, getting a team to be able to support you, like things like learning about the unconscious mind and how to navigate your emotional kind of state to produce the most effective outcomes. Things like, you know, budgeting and saving are crucial, but loving the process and, and things like learning how to engage and connect with people and meeting new people and doing this on a consistent basis. I say in my trainings, your network um, equals your net worth. And these are fundamental skills that need to happen on a daily basis. And I guarantee you, if you start to associate pleasure to this stuff, 
then your life over a 12-month period, two years, three years, six years, seven years, will be in a completely different position. The challenge is, is a lot of people, they get paralyzed by their wounds and they go, oh, it's not that bad yet. Or I'm not willing to invest time. I'm not willing to invest the money at the moment. But guess what? I'm really willing to invest in stuff that is going to hold me back. I'm willing to invest in food that's killing me or drugs or whatever it is or cigarettes. I'm, I'm willing to buy the next, you know, uh, flat screen TV or digital TV, even though my current one's working really well, or the next iPhone or iPad, even though my current one's working really well, but I need to have that. Like, imagine you flipped it. Imagine you said, you know what, I'm going to invest that stuff that is not getting me any closer to where I want. I'm going to invest it into myself, into my education, into becoming the best version of me, into uncovering the habits that are going to produce the most incredible results and then conditioning them. Conditioning them. I'm going to um, invest to be able to uncover exactly what I'm here to be doing, that mission. I'm going to build tribes around me that is going to like get me to that point where I'm playing the biggest game possible. See, the saddest thing when I'm sitting down with people is this, is the realization that most people will never get to discover their best version. Never, ever get to discover their best version because their wounds are so strong and their suppressions are so strong, whether it be TV, drugs, alcohol, food, whatever it is. And like, it is so sad to see that in my events. And also, like, if you look at it, you know, not only will no, most people not experience their best version, but unfortunately, most people will not even experience a mission or what their mission is. And like, once you get connected to a higher purpose, a higher mission, which is, which is often the service of other people, life becomes magic. Like the secret to living is giving and not giving from a wound, that's rescuing. It's, it's working out. You know, what are you here for? What are you here for? We've got this short amount of time on this planet and most people waste that time in trance or suppressing emotions. But the wounds are actually the key when you realize it and instead of running away from it and delaying it and waiting for the crisis, it's, it's facing it. It's facing it. It's moving through it. And then this becomes part of your mission, your mission, your purpose. Like if you think about it, um, this concept of of living it now instead of living at the past, living in the past, or you know, living in the future, thinking about the worst case scenario. These two kind of processes of living in the past, living in the future, um, thinking of the worst case scenario, they delay. They delay our opportunity. They delay our experience. And so, live it now is the concept of waking up and deciding to do stuff right now. And as I said to you, not this concept of, uh, you know, oh, I need to be a million dollars in the next week or whatever it is. No, 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 no. It's going micro and go, going, what can I do now? But then looking at the long term and, and then setting up your daily schedule so that you can build these daily decisions which turn into habits um, that will take you, your life, like on a new journey, a true target. Um, and, and this happens over the long term. And so I really love what Ty Lopez says is, um, you know, you don't start with patience. Patience is a killer. Um, it will have you <laughs> avoid getting into action. You want to start with impatient. You want to impatiently get into the things that you need to be doing. And then once you start, have the patience to take the long-term approach. And, and I think that is so key. And that's what I share with my Live It Now brand is this, we want to wake you up. And, um, and that's my, what my Live It Now two-day event is about. It's a positive crisis instead of waiting for the negative crisis. It's a positive crisis to wake you up so you make some new decisions and you realize that change is possible, everybody. And so if you're listening to this podcast today, I want you to think of an area of life that you're avoiding right now. You're kind of being patient, if you will. And, and I'd like you to go, okay, let's change it now. Let's live it now. Let's do something now and get into action. Do the micro things right now because, you know, momentum is the key. When you start moving, that's when clarity starts to happen. And then be patient in your approach long term. And a great way to do this is to look at your schedule and go, right, let's book this in as an appointment. Let's book these habits in as an, in, as an appointment. 
and, um, and, and then associate pleasure to it. You don't have to push yourself hard. No, 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 no. The first phase is developing a positive association to those behaviors, um, those rituals. And look, I guarantee you, as you start to get momentum and you start to see the results, suddenly you look forward to doing all of this stuff. And the thing about it is, is that when you look forward to it all, it becomes easy. That's what we call towards motivation. If you think about like the things that you love the most, you're naturally disciplined around. About. So if you would like help, um, we are here to help you. We have some of the best coaches in the country that are waiting to work with you one-on-one -on -one to look at the, the mindset that is in the way or the wounds that are in the way and to help you put a plan and to hold you accountable to this stuff. I have my Live It Now event coming up in February. Um, there's a link below. Um, come along to that event and look at what your wounds are doing and, and learn the five steps to rapid change, which is the science of follow through. And most importantly, it's a fun two day event where you get to build a new tribe that is going to help you get to whether it be best version or the mission that you're going for. And so I hope you enjoyed this podcast. The key is to do something, do something right now. Um, think of my brand, live it now. Your future now, create your future now, excellence now, coach now, influence now, entrepreneur now. Uh, there's a common theme there, and that is right now. So make sure you do something right now. And that might be booking in some coaching. It might be booking in to live it now. Um, but make sure you do something right now. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please uh, let me know what you thought about it. If you've got any questions, um, I'm here to help everybody. Thank you so much.